today we have Chencho with us. He is our accountant here, and uh, accounting manager, excuse me. And he's gonna talk to us a little bit about Cinco de Mayo. We've been spending a lot of time learning over the past few weeks, and today we're just gonna talk about the celebration of Cinco de Mayo, what it's about, and then talk a little bit about what we do to celebrate. So you guys can start writing in what you do to celebrate so we can talk about some of that too. Chencho? As you guys can see, this is not a quilt in, uh, Facebook Live or anything like that, I wouldn't do a good job on that. Uh, I work with numbers, but that's, that's something different than, than showing you guys how to quilt or anything like that. Um, well, today's Cinco de Mayo. It's, it's, a, it's a special day. And, and you know, I think it's even more special because it's Taco Tuesday as well. So Cinco de Mayo plus Taco Tuesday, you know, that's a good combination, right? So uh, a lot of people may ask, what is Cinco de Mayo? or what does Cinco de Mayo mean? Uh, basically, it just means the fifth of May. That's what it means. And what does it mean in Spanish? Well, in Spanish, it's Cinco de Mayo, fifth of May, right? And some people may ask, you know, why do people celebrate Cinco de Mayo? Is it the Mexican independence? Is it the Mexican independence, Cinco de Mayo? No, it's not, right? This is not a Mexican independent Cinco de Mayo, even though a lot of people think this. You're right. Um, this Cinco de Mayo has to do with mayonnaise. You know, it's how you put your sandwich. It's mayo, Cinco de Mayo. It has nothing to do with mayonnaise either. <laughs> so what is Cinco de Mayo then? Well, basically, Cinco de Mayo is a, people celebrate a victory against the French in the Battle of Puebla in 1862. And you may ask yourself, why was the French fighting Mexico in 1862? Well, to give you guys a little bit of background about the history of Cinco de Mayo, uh, in the 19th century, Mexico went through various conflicts. Uh, it started out with, uh, in 1821, when they fought uh, Spain for independence. Uh, later, they fought the United States uh, in the war against the United States in, from 1946 to 1948. And to add to that, later in the late 1950s, 1857, Mexico had their own civil war. They call it the Reform War. So by 1862, you know, as you can see, conflicts like that bring, uh, cost a lot of money and the army was depleted and all that kind of stuff. So Mexico was in a very bad shape, I guess. And during those years, they were borrowing a bunch of money from other countries, like Europe, for example. So in 1862, uh, President uh, of Mexico said, we have no money, we told the European, we have no money to pay you. We don't even have money to pay interest on the debt we have to you guys. So he suspended payments, principal and interest to, the, to, to, to Spain, the, the France, and England, said we're not paying you for two years. We have no money for anything. So that didn't settle very good with them. They said, that's not good. You know, we, we have to do something about it. So, so England and uh, France and, and Spain got together and said, we're gonna invade Mexico. We're gonna, we're gonna get what's ours. We, we need to get something. But, French had a different idea. The, the French people said, uh, we're gonna, we don't want our money, we wanna take over Mexico, we wanna go and rule. We wanna go and take over the part of the world, we wanna, we wanna do that. So then uh, Spain said, well, you know what, we don't wanna do that. England said, we don't wanna do that, we, you go by yourself. You go right ahead, take over Mexico, do whatever you wanna do. So then, uh, so uh, by then um, the French, uh, President when uh, Napoleon III said, okay, we, we, we can do this. We have a big army. Mexico has no money. The army is depleted. We're gonna go and invade the country and take over the country. And so they went, sent a bunch of, bunch of army, a bunch of troops. And in 1862, just to cut it short a little bit, they were advancing to, the, to Mexico City uh, where they're gonna you know, take over. And there was this this town, this state called Puebla. So they were getting close to Mexico City, and then in Puebla, 
the Mexican army was waiting for them. They said, you know, we're small, but let's do something about it. So they fought the Battle of Puebla on May 5th, 1862. And surprisingly, the Mexican army defeated uh, the French army. And even though there was a very small army, the French had money, had, you know, 6,000 plus troops, but the Mexico with their lower army, they defeated the French. So they said, this is celebration, you know, that's, that's cool, we defeated the French, you know, this is, this is something uh, unbelievable. So since, since then, people started celebrating Cinco de Mayo, and it actually became a national holiday back then, uh, Cinco de Mayo, and then, since then, here we are, celebrating Cinco de Mayo. People celebrate with food, people celebrate with drinks, you know, so it's, it's a big thing uh, from, from there on. And that's, that's, a, that's a little bit of the history about Cinco de Mayo. If I left some details behind, I'm not a historian, but uh, you know, I guess this is what I know about it. Thank you, Jensen. I'm gonna have you move to the front of the machine for the next part, because some people are having trouble hearing you. So oh, if you okay. want to scoot up close to Shandy there. Um, so he's going to get to the fun part of Cinco de Mayo now, because that's obviously the history part. But we all know that we like to eat tacos, we like to eat all kinds of fun stuff. Um, and I'm going to surprise some of my coworkers because they're all gathered around watching and they don't know I'm going to do this. Yeah. But hey, um, Bobby, come here for a second. Can you come tell us what your favorite food is to eat on Cinco de Mayo? I made some of them run, just so you know. <laughs> come on up here. No, they want to see you on camera, right here. Yeah. There we go. Hi. <laughs> What's your favorite food to eat on Cinco de Mayo? I would say my favorite food would be chimichangas. Chimichangas, those yes. are pretty good. Yes, those are pretty good. good. Pretty good. Eric, Eric what about come you? On. Come on up here. What's the question? What's your favorite food to eat on Cinco de Mayo? Hey everybody. Uh, favorite food would probably be um, our local Mexican place, El Charo, has uh, uh, seafood nachos. And they are absolutely amazing. So I uh, might have to actually go there and get some carry out tonight. There you go. It's a good day to go, right? Yeah. I'm making chicken enchiladas tonight, so that's that's what I'm doing. So Chencho is going to share with you a couple of recipes. The first one is for some guacamole, and then he's going to share a margarita recipe, and then we will see you guys tomorrow. Okay. Well, um, you know, who doesn't like guacamole, right? So I'm. Thought about maybe giving us a recipe, a really simple recipe of a, a guacamole recipe. The ingredients about one and a half to two avocados, uh, sliced jalapeno, depending on how you like it, uh, purple onion, purple red onion, whatever you call it, and uh, half of the lime juice, and, um, and salt, and pepper if you like. So basically you slice the, or in tomatoes. Slice up tomatoes, slice, up, slice the jalapeno, um, the onions, and then you know, cut your avocados, just kind of mix it all together and just chop it up, chop it up. And then salt it to, to your taste, that, that makes it really good avocado, uh, guacamole. Just kind of like a chunky guacamole type, that's, that's what it is. And now for you, for, for those that like to, to drink margaritas, uh, I'm gonna give you guys a very simple, easy, uh, very good uh, margarita recipe. Uh, the ingredients that you need is uh, tequila, of course. Uh, probably, I would say, ounce and a half to two ounces of tequila. Uh, you need about uh, an ounce of uh, sweet and sour and about an ounce of fresh lime juice. So you need about two, at least two lime uh, juices, and you need the juice from the lime juice. And then uh, you need ice. So you're gonna put the ice on uh, maybe a 16 ounce cup, put the ice, uh, put the sweet and sour, put the lime juice, and then uh, the tequila. Uh, by then you will have about maybe about two thirds full on, the, on, the, on, your, on your glass. And then the last thing you're gonna do is put some cranberry juice. Not, not very much, I would say about half an ounce. 
uh, cranberry juice, it'll, it'll give it color, basically. It'll give it, it'll give it some color uh, and a little bit of, of, of hint of that cranberry juice taste. So and just, just mix it all together and, and that makes a really good margarita. That's my favorite. And that's, that one usually don't, don't make it at the restaurants. It's kind of my, my personal recipe. And then it, it, it'll be kind of sour. It's not a sweet margarita, it'll be kind of sour, but uh, you know, you, you don't want to use too much, uh, uh, too much sweet and sour, too much margarita mix or anything like that because it's just a bunch of processed stuff, right? And then if it's too sour for you, you can add some French, uh, some orange juice. Orange juice gives it a little bit of sweetness to it. And there you go. That's a, that's a margarita recipe. Uh, by the end, it'll have like a kind of like a goldish, goldish color to it. So, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, different uh, Facebook Live. Uh, we thank everybody that has been joining this Facebook Live, and, and we appreciate everybody. Uh, you know, hello to all the quilters, all wonderful people out there that are making quilts, and just everybody in general. Bye.